after NC State lost to Duke in the fashion in which they lost it to where Mike Elko has brought Duke in less than two years, I said that Dave Doran has officially entered the Herb Sendek zone. For the younger members of our audience, and I see the demographics, I know I got a few 18 to 20-year-olds in the listening group. Herb Sendek was the basketball coach at NC State after the dark times, after they got out of the Jimmy V and probation, Les Robinson, Les Robinson invita- yeah, invitational, yeah. that whole very bad, stringent yes. academic it was the bad times, standards, the bad times, the dark days. So Herb had to rebuild the program and he didn't really break through until the Julius Hodge, Ilyan Evtimov class. Okay. That was, that was when, when Herb was running hot. Okay. But even at his hottest, even while making the NCAA tournament, he couldn't beat Duke and he couldn't beat North Carolina. Three and 21. The only time he beat North Carolina was during North Carolina's dark time. Yeah. The Matt Doherty years. He, he did beat Gut 98 over in Chapel Hill. Yes. Clint, I remember that Clint game. Cotis Harrison. I was that, that, was a, that was a Valentine's Day game. It was I remember correctly. hotter than hot. It was. And then he beat Doe twice. Yes. So Herb left because it was never going to get any better here. Okay. Herb could have stayed. I agree, I, I agree with that. But I think Herb could have stayed because of the allies that he had in within the athletic department and the school. Yes, but I, where you and I disagree, while he could have stayed, it would not have worked out for everybody. Okay. It only would have made life more miserable for Lee Fowler. I, I think he made the smart choice in going to Arizona State yes. on April Fool's Day in 2006. Yes. Why is it April Fool's Day? Always. Why is it, why is it always April Fool's <laughs> I Day? I think he made the right choice. Please don't get me wrong. Yes. But I also think like he was stubborn enough because remember that last year he gave Chip Alexander at the News Observer this interview about Buddha and oh, Zen yeah, yeah, and how he embraced all of this stuff and yeah. how you know it was like yeah. letting stuff go and oh dude he was Herb was very good at while not developing allies with fandom he was good at developing and giving you context behind the scenes like I've told this yeah. story before where Herb Sendek and the coaching staff went over to 850 the buzz and brought pizza. Mm-hmm. Look, if you want to win over sports radio people, man, you bring them free pizza. <laughs> it, buddy, let me tell not you. Not just sports radio. I, I know, mean, it's, anybody. It's, it's anybody, really. <laughs> oh, you brought us free pizza. Oh, whatever it's you have to say. Very simple. Very so, simple. I remember sitting in on that conversation. It was me, Adam Gold, Morgan Patrick, Chris Clark, Jarrett Whaley. Shout out to Jarrett Whaley. The J-Dog. And Herb just kind of laid out, like, here are the things that I had to work through. Yeah. And, the first couple of years. Yeah, and yeah, I, re- yeah. and I remember. More difficult than people realize. And, yes. and mind you, I'm in my mid-20s, dude. I don't know shit from shit. All right. Yeah. But I remember asking Herb, why don't you explain this? Even Adam at one point was like, well, why don't you just kind of like lose your shit on the sideline one day? Yeah, which right? he did not which he never did. like to do. There's the Buddha point, right? Yeah. And he's like, well, what does that get me? That's not me. I'm like, okay, understand where you're coming from. But again, context, it mattered. And this, again, gets me to flash back to that time, and it makes me think about Dave Dorn now. This particular fan base enjoys a personality. Yes, they do. Thanks to Jim Bolano, thanks to Chuck Amato, that can go a long way. Yes, and to a certain and extent, the and to a certain extent, Tom O'Brien too, because while Tom O'Brien was not boisterous, if you paid attention to what Tom O'Brien was saying, that dude could cut you deep. Right. Like, Tom O'Brien was the king of stabbing you without you even realizing it until it's Tom too late. also won his first four games against Carolina. That matters as well. Yeah. And that's actually the one thing that's helped Dave Dorn throughout this yes. entire time. He's won five of the last seven that against matters. Carolina. But the reason why I feel that Dave has now entered the Herb Zone is because of what's happening at Duke. Okay. What's happening at Duke, the, the combination of North Carolina looking at this once-in-a-generation opportunity to get to the college football playoff with a generational quarterback. Yeah. And Duke having turned things around as quickly as they have and getting the attention that they're getting right now with Mike Elko has put Dave after 11 years of what exactly have you done? Now, Dave has been a model of consistency, man. Only two losing seasons. We could be looking at a third losing season. But again, only two losing seasons to this point. Eight or more wins in six years. And he's beaten Carolina, as you mentioned. Uh, what, five out of the last seven years they've beaten UNC. Those are things that you ultimately want in a, in a coach. But the issue is that the, the the ceiling hasn't reached the peak. The, the, the ceiling doesn't have those I moments. I think that's that where you he's can the go most to. like Herb. Yes. Right? So if he didn't live through the Herb era, he was there for 10 years. His first five years, he did not make the NCAA tournament. His mm-hmm. very first year, they made the ACC championship game. They played four games in four days. If you don't know who Justin Ganey is, please go Google it. 
we're, after we're that, so old. after that, he had hired Larry Hunter, who everyone rest rest in peace, man. Everyone gives a lot of credit to Larry, who was at Western Carolina and mm-hmm. came over and became his, I mean, right hand man. Helped him change for sure. Five straight NCAA trips. Herb finished in the top three. How many times in the top three of the regular season standings did Herb Sendek finish in the top three? Once, twice, twice. Okay, twice. So yeah, they made the ACC title game three times. I mentioned mm-hmm. ninety-seven, oh two, and then of course oh three, mm-hmm. where they had it. Yeah. So oh three becomes like his white whale. Um, then his best team was actually in 04. That was the one that went eleven and five, finished second in the league. They had this epic collapse in the NCAA tournament to Vanderbilt, mm-hmm. the Matt Freege game. Oh boy, Again, I was there for that one. Get the Googles going in Orlando. And don't bring it up. The, the only thing worse than bringing up Chris Paul to Julius Hodge is Matt is Freege. Matt don't Freege. do it. So now the the comparison there with Herb was he also had some assistants who people clamored for. Mm-hmm. Sean Miller, we mentioned Hunter, but then Sean Miller, Archie Miller were considered, oh my gosh, well, if we could just get the Millers to take over, yeah, this would be great. Yeah. Dave Doran, 11 years. You, you mentioned bowls. They've been to eight bowl games. It's not the same as it used to be, but still, eight of his 11 years thus far have been to a bowl game. Top 25 twice, which if you look historically where NC State is, that's a great rate. Two, twice in 10 years to finish in the top 25 is very good. Mm-hmm. Um, 2017, 2021. His best team was in 17. They went nine and four. They lost to South Carolina in a game statistically that should have never happened. They outgained South Carolina by 400 (laughs) yards and still managed to lose the football game. Right. Uh, They lost at Notre Dame, lost to Clemson at home, and then they lost to Wake in a game that everyone and their mother would like back. He had assistants that are now people are clamoring for. Eli Drinkwitz in the case of his former offense coordinator and now Todd Gibson, everyone, mm-hmm. Gibson, excuse me, Tony Gibson. Tony Gibson, everyone's like, oh my goodness, they can't let Tony Gibson go. He's the real coach of this team. They got to hang out. Like, there's a big, there's some big Sean Miller energy going on mm-hmm. with, with, with Tony Gibson right mm-hmm. now. Uh, and here, perhaps, is the most, and we talked about the differences. Dave does have the success against Carolina. Herb did not. Um, now, Herb Sendek's ACC record, which I did not know. Obviously, you play basketball, you play more games. So I'm just going to give you, sure. I'll give you Herb Sendek's winning percentage over 10 years in the mm-hmm. ACC. Point four five zero, okay, just under five hundred. Dave Doran, as we sit here today, his ACC win percentage point four five nine. No, <laughs> like no. I couldn't have come up with that. I, I couldn't, could not have. Yeah, I mean, look, a, a thirty, a thirty nine and forty six ACC record, and it's not just all Atlantic, by the way. Uh, sure, because everybody went, well, it's the division, it's division, and that actually, uh, you can look at some of those losses to coastal teams as well. Now, I, 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 I will say this though. I do think there is a path forward for Dave. And that is? It's the classic NC State path of wait till next year. Yeah. See, I'm more willing to look at this oh, year and can we, say... Can we put a pause right there? Yeah. Dave is not in any sort of job trouble. No, 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 no. Dave he has, has plenty job, of allies. Dave has allies. Dave has job security. He's not going anywhere. The point of this conversation is, can you envision a scenario where Dave... And he's flirted with it. Okay? He's flirted with it. Sure. That Dave hits the full herb zone and says... Yeah, man, it's not worth it. It's not worth it to keep it okay. going here because everybody's made up their mind and it's only like every loss becomes a referendum. You could have a good season and every loss becomes a referendum. Yeah, it becomes a yeah, but right. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but you get sick of that shit after a while, oh. man. I, I laid this scenario out last year when the Arizona State job was open. Okay. Okay. Which would have been even <laughs> more hysterical. <laughs> like anyway. I I I do think there is a path for Dave in the program. And because it is the classic NC State wait till next year, the, the Paler and Richie, the two kids who played against each other actually last Friday night. Mm-hmm. If you have a recruiting class, hope is always the way home. Yeah. That also includes, though, MJ Morris and Kevin Concepcion still being on the football team going <laughs> forward. So these are all tricky things. They have they to are. get better out of the portal. They have to start doing some things to help themselves. But I actually do see a way home. Unlike Herb's situation, which I thought did reach DEFCON zero. Mm-hmm. I think Dave's more of at like a two. Okay. Now, I, I think it's in his best interest the day after Thanksgiving to not let Carolina come in here oh, and you can't run get them your ass out beat. of the gym oh, herb no. style because you got to remember no. the game where they lost at home by 26 is where Herb lost the fans. If NC State gets their ass handed to him, I'm thinking about opening up a live stream yard 
well, and, we will. and giving the link out. Well, we to will either no, way. And giving link out to the people so they can just join jump in, in and just jump in. I'll get you in the green room and bring you up. I'm like, I'm considering this. Uh, no, I think we I'm absolutely should. Like, how do I take, it's like, how do I take live calls? I know. 